If you are a target of workplace bullying, one of the reasons you get bullied in the workplace may be that you are still a true believer. No matter what other people may have done to you, you never lost your faith in the innate goodness of life, that the world is basically a good place, and that most people in it are inherently good. It's a projection. Workplace bullies project onto us, but we project too. If you are a good person, you may assume that other people are too, give them the benefit of the doubt, and fail to see what they really are. It's naivete. Don't beat yourself up about it. We all do it. We all have on our Pollyanna rose-colored glasses. We can't confront the full horror of our present reality because to do so would cripple our psyche. The opposite of faith is cynicism. That's what workplace bullies are doing. Life's a bitch and then you die type thing. These are people who have completely given up on themselves. I mean, they're not even trying anymore. Targets of workplace bullying may not be perfect, but one thing you can say about us is at least we're trying. The point is you don't let ugly people make you as ugly as they are. You have not resigned yourself and surrendered to brute raw cynicism. If these people see one thing that they hate, that's it. Workplace bullies are people who let ugly people make them as ugly as they are and they use their trauma as an excuse to basically be shitty people. You're not supposed to do that. That's kind of the whole point of the whole fucking thing. Workplace bullies miss that point. However, if you are a true believer, I guarantee you workplace bullies call you immature. If you get the immature gaslighting, let me go ahead and translate that one for you real quick. It may be in response to your physical appearance alone. When you hear it from the same sex, it means you look younger than I do. And when you hear it from the opposite sex, it means you are too young for me. But what immature really means is that you have retained beautiful childlike qualities such as curiosity and wonder, joy in small things, gratitude for the gift of life, and faith, this steadfast, unwavering belief in the innate goodness of life, the world, and others, and above all, the ability to trust. Because without trust, there can be no love, and love is what we live for. But in the warped, sick, dark, ugly, twisted minds of narcissistic workplace bullies, there is no distinction between childlike and childish. Meanwhile, all the same people who call us immature also call us at the same time negative. You're a dark, negative person because we identify, call out, and articulate injustice in this world instead of glossing over it, sticking our heads in the sand, turning a blind eye, and sweeping everything under the rug with superficial new age toxic positivity, which is really nothing more than emotional cowardice. We don't stand for injustice because we know we don't have to. We are not afraid to confront the darkness because we know the way out. We are creative enough to envision a better world. We know that things don't have to be this way because we know that we have the capacity to be and do better. If you are a target of workplace bullying, you're actually the one person in the room going, let's go green. Culturally, there's a lot of mean as hell, public ridicule and mockery of true believers, people like us who are still making an effort. That again is more primitive Cro-Magnon, Neanderthal, caveman, tribalism. Naivete is dangerous. It's dangerous to trust. Trust is a vulnerability and your vulnerability is gonna get everyone into trouble. When the world is trying to beat your faith out of you, it's actually like an act of love to toughen you up, give you a thicker skin, to kill your sensitivity so that it doesn't hurt you the way it hurt them. It's a ham-fisted attempt to protect you from getting hurt. If you adopt a cynical view of the world, then you don't get disappointed. Naivete is a defense mechanism. It's escapist and avoidant. 
and a reluctance to confront reality before it's too late. Some targets of workplace bullying are good people who happen to stumble into a viper's nest and get eaten alive, chewed up and spat out by psychopaths, sociopaths, and narcissists, and then they move on to a healthier environment. Hope springs eternal. If, however, this is chronic repetitive trauma, if this is a pattern in workplace after workplace after workplace, at some point, you might wanna ask yourself, how much longer do I really want to keep doing this? The first step to recovery from narcissistic abuse is called radical acceptance. As targets of workplace bullying, there are a number of things that we need to radically accept. Number one, it happened. If it's in the past, let it go. Number two, there are people in the world who are not like us. If you don't believe in evil, it believes in you. And finally, healthy workplaces do not exist. There is no such thing as a healthy workplace. If the president and CEO of a nonprofit for domestic and sexual violence is a functioning psychopath, then these people are everywhere. They are in your church. Human nature has changed relatively little over the course of civilization. Anytime you get people working together in a group dynamic, there is going to be conflict. At this point, I think anyone who denies the existence of bullying in their workplace is either lying through their teeth or delusional. We're like family. We love each other. Delusional, toxic positivity fuckwits and emotional cowards who don't want to confront reality and who have insidiously purged their workplaces of any and all outliers because they don't want to suffer the loss that comes with change. They remind me, and I know I'm dating myself with this reference, of when in 2007, Ahmadina Jad spoke at Columbia University and he said, and this is a direct quote, in Iran, we don't have homosexuals like in your country. It's delusional and it's denial. People gaslight targets of workplace bullying with things like, that's just the way the world is and that's just how people are. First of all, any advice that contains the word just is emotionally illiterate. Adult human psychology is complicated and there is no just anything. I used to think attitudes like that were negative, defeatist and fatalistic, but to a certain extent, they're right. Workplace bullying exists because someone, somewhere, arbitrarily decided that the workplace is a war zone and they're holding up the whole traffic jam at the front of the line for the rest of us. You can't live without hope. That's called despair from the French word désespoir which literally means unhope. You don't have to descend into cynicism, hopelessness, and defensiveness. And you don't have to give up your beautiful childlike qualities like joy, trust, faith, and hope. Just stop casting your pearls before swine. Reserve your positive qualities only for people who actually deserve them and keep them all outside the workplace. I hope that helps. Take care.